Good morning, America. My name is Princess Spaghetti Unicorn. And my name is Mr. Rhino Donkey. And don't I forget to say good morning to India. Oh. And Mexico. Oh. And Saudi Iran. Wait, Saudi Iran? Saudi Iran. We're not going to say Saudi Arabia. Do you want us to be racist or something? Fair enough. Well, after a short period of... Trigger! Trigger! Oh no, not again! Not a heart attack! I think I'm constipated! After that short interruption, we're back with the news. You have anything to say, Shrieker? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to start off with the topic of Nibiru. As you guys know, Nibiru has been a very contradicting topic in today's society. Everywhere you look in the news, it's right there. Like over there on the wall. Oh, I see it. Okay. Oh. Oh. Well, anyways, uh, three years ago, I had a topic that this planet called Nibiru exists on the outreaches of our solar system. And you were wrong. I mean, I still hold on to that theory. And you were wrong. Oh. And I still think it's true, but there has not been anything to collide with Earth to prove my theory yet. But they have discovered something that might be the ninth planet in our solar system. This planet was discovered in late January by Constantine Batkin and Michael E. Brown. And they didn't even plan it. No. Oh. No. It was discovered after looking at the orbits of other protoplanets around the solar system and discovered that something must be tilting their orbits. They predicted that this planet was about 10 times the size of Earth and took approximately 15,000 years to orbit the sun. This is extremely long time and we probably will never find visual evidence of this planet as it is an ice planet and doesn't emit any light. That's about as long as my attention span. It's pretty short. I know. This planet was codenamed Fatty, as it is pretty big, and they have yet to explain the reasoning for this name. Hopefully this is not the actual name of the planet. <laughs> That's what I call you. And after this mysterious planet, we're probably going to go over to Mr. Rhino Donkey and his book of the day. So, we have a new segment, which is kind of old because apparently we didn't do our video yesterday, we did it three years ago. My book is going to be Wake Technical Community College 3rd Edition Intro to Computers. So I want to give a special shout out to Pearson, because their motto is always learning. They're a sponsor, if you didn't know. We don't get paid, we pay them, but shh, 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 what is this? So I'm going to flip to a random page, which I don't have bookmarked. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it. Okay, so today, I'm going to teach you about a page I haven't read before. It's called Virus Creation. And step one is you have a hacker's computer. Step two is you have a file sharing computer. And then you have a server on that computer. And step three is that you have Bill's computer, your next door neighbor that you've always been creeped because makes weird loud sounds Dude, at night. Bill is so creepy. Kill yourself. Oh. Okay, so a bunch of things happen. Like, there's some stuff that happened. And then you have a virus. And that's how virus creation works. Let's move on to Princess Spaghetti Unicorn's book. I've chosen this book. I've read it <laughs> numerous amount of times, and I would recommend it to anybody. My book is The Student's Handbook, and it's a dictionary. So I'm going to flip to a random page, and we're going to talk about a random word in the dictionary. That looks like a good word. Number 297. On page 297, there is this word called slick. Slick is a noun. It's a piece of small degree or of little <laughs> importance. That's important. Wait, that was slight. <laughs> I guess slight's our word. Slick also happens to be a synonym for shrieker? What? What? Mr. Ranadonkey? What? What is, what's happening here? Dude, ugly's on page 365. Okay. Slick is an adjective. It's a surface that is slippery when wet, or clever and deceitful, which neither of us are. Thank you. You can use this word in a sentence by saying, Damn, Daniel. Back again with the slick vans. Or you cannot, or you, because you probably get killed by an angry mob of little kids. And after this book, we're going to go on to the next segment, 
which is with Mr. Rhino Donkey and his math. So, as you guys know, I'm decently good at math, and I like myself some Pythagorean theorem. So, what I want to show you today is how to do some math called the Pythagorean. This is the formula. I mean, what? Oh, that's the wrong thing. Never that was mind. Confidential. That was confidential. Oh. So, I'm going to teach you the Pythagorean theorem. So, I already wrote the formula down wrong because it's lowercase a squared plus lowercase b squared equals it's lowercase very c important. squared. important. Yes. Remember, last time in the other video, we talked about how you had to have a big B. Well, you don't have to have a big B. Whoever said that's stupid. Oh, wait, that was us. Right. Never mind. Very anyway. good looking and smart. Exactly. But we haven't changed it all, so. No. Yeah. Pretty slick. Using some vocab words. You got Using me those there. vocab words. Kill yourself. Okay. So, the first thing I want to teach you is this, and I taught you that. So let's move on to the next segment of Pythagorean Theorem. Wait. You have to introduce variables into your function. And that's what we have. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So now I'm going to give you an example problem. Okay. These are used with triangles because they have to be right, and that's what's right. Ha ha! Ha ha! ha. Kill yourself. That's my line. Don't worry about it. Anyway. After you introduced your variables, which are a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which are always small, we have to think about the variable h. Wait. Is there no variable h? I thought there wasn't a h. There is no h. But there's always a h. You're the only... Oh, I can't think of a pun. Anyway, so, I'll give you an example problem. There is a right triangle somewhere in this room. Tell me the measurements. Um, 6.5... <laughs> okay, okay, um... I'll give you a squared is equal to 2, b squared is equal to 4. What is c squared equal to? So, if a squared is equal to 2, that means a equals 2. If no, b that means squared... a, squared, a equals squared to 2. This is why I do the math segment. Wait, I thought a squared was... Okay, so we're done with the math segment because we can't do the math anymore. On to you. As you know, we love our animals, and we also love our dicks. We had a dictionary, and what's better than a dictionary? It's a dick dick. What's the difference? I don't really think there's a difference. Okay. Dick dicks are small antelopes found in East and Southern Africa. They have a lifespan of 10 years and are very adorable. You should definitely search them up on your free time. But there are a lot of dicks out there. There's the Kirk dick. There's a Southern dick. There's a Gunther dick. There's a Salt dick. And there's a Silver dick. And there's also a Godly Albanian dick. Yeah, Don't search up my name on Urban Dictionary. Shout out to Urban Dictionary. Sponsor us. Sponsor. Please. Please don't search up Silver Dick on uh, Google because you might not get the animal. You might get something else. The dictionary. Anyway, thanks for your information about a dick dick. No problem. I want to talk about a fish. And it's very crappy. It's called the crappy fish. Dude, who drew those amazing pictures? I'm not sure. We paid someone to draw those. That's Wait, good... they paid us. Never mind. He's a good artist. Okay, so these crappy fish are more time... Mm, they're more prominent in the night. Okay? They're under the featured fish called a calico brass. Calico... Calico... Calico brass, I think? Calico? I think I'm so. Not sure. They're called calico bass. And the largest crappy fish ever found was six pounds. Probably all from crap. They're considered flaky and white-skinned, so some people call them the best-tasting fish. But we're so vegetarians. I guess... Kill yourself. So, I guess they're not so crappy after all. They're generally in freshwater springs, and in the spring, they're in shallow water. I said spring twice. That's actually pretty funny. Okay. Let's not spring to conclusions here. I have already sprung to conclusions. What are we doing with our lives? What lives? Anyway, we're going to show you how to catch a crappy fish with a demonstration. Okay. So, your tie will be my little fish catching thing, okay? You got a fishing rod? No, I think a fish catching thing is a prominent name, okay? Okay. So, we use small jigs to catch them. So, you move your fishing rod back. Woo! Like that. And you throw it into the water. Okay. And remember, They're... you have to go fishing at night, because these creatures are nocturnal creatures and are very active at night. They're so... actually not nocturnal, they're just very prominent at night. It's okay. Sometimes it happens. Always try different depths when you go to um, 
a spring because you don't want to try one place and then not have them there and give up. Always try different Never ducks because it can always be there. Actually, give up if you're shrubbing, but okay, it's okay. They're mostly active in the winter, but most fish, most, most fish aren't, so that's why most people fish ice fish with for the scrappy fish. But here's an interesting fact. If you think your bed is crappy, wait till you hear this. The crappy fish bed is actually made out of crap. It's made out of trees, crap, and it's also made out of bushes. Bushes? Bushes. It's crazy how weird crappy fish are. Crappy fish are very interesting animals, and so are dick dicks. Feel free to do research on these animals on your free time. So, I guess that's the conclusion of something we made up just now. Thanks for watching episode 2 of the Epic Knock Log. We will see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Ta-da! Oh right, Ramya, you get a shout out.